Hello friends, Heidi here from Ring Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about seeds. And no, I'm not talking about seeds for planting. I'm talking about seeds just for eating. So I have five seeds that I really, really like to use, especially in my homemade breads, pancakes, and yogurts. And I'll talk about that in a bit, but first let me go over these five seeds which, uh, so you know which ones they are. Uh, black seed is probably the last one I added to this. Be, uh, and I started buying it just because of its health benefits, but didn't care for the flavor initially. But now I do like using it in my breads and crackers in conjunction with some of these other seeds. Um, in anything that I, I want a more savory flavor rather than a sweet flavor. And then I have hemp seed, which is actually hemp hearts. It's not the entire seed. I have chia seed, flax seed, and the very first seed I started adding on a regular basis, which was poppy seeds. So I have videos on the black seed, which is nigella sativa, and the chia seed and the flax seed. I have videos on the benefits. I'll link to all three of those down below, but eventually I'll get to doing a breakdown of the benefits of these two, the hemp and the poppy. And the thing I like about all of these seeds is that they're fairly small and easy to blend in with various different things. You can add them to smoothies, you can add them to, like I said, yogurt, breads, and so many other things. I'm sure the possibilities are endless. My current new favorite thing to use them in is the homemade cracker bread that I make. And I have a video on, and also I have, I did a short on it, which I'll put right here so you can see that there. But it's it's pretty easy to make. It's, uh, again, it's a, it's a cracker bread. It's really thin and crisp. And then I use all whole grains and the different seeds. I do add the black seed to that one. I don't use the hemp in that one. Sometimes I, it just depends. It just depends on my mood at the time. Like I said, the black seed is something I only add to savory bread. So I use it in almost every a yeast bread, dinner roll, or cracker that I'm going to make. Whereas the rest of these I'm going to use in things like pancakes, sweet bread such as cinnamon rolls, and more. Now one of the reasons I'm bringing this up, or the main reason I'm bringing this up, is I want to talk a little bit about the soaking of the seeds, especially when it comes to the flax seed, because it's got the hardest outer, outer shell. Now the hemp seed, because they're hearts, it's not a big deal. You don't have to soak or grind these. You can use them as is. But these three are best if you soak them first, and in particular, the flax seed. Some people think you just have to grind them to get their benefits. And while, yes, that is one option that you can do if you choose, uh, I do, one of the reasons I don't do that, especially with the flax, is I found when I first got a grain mill and I was starting to add the flax seed into the grains when I was grinding them up, I found that because they are so very oily, they tend to want to glom everything up in there. So that wasn't a desirable thing. But you can also grind them in something smaller, like a coffee grinder is a really great thing to use to grind up your flax seed if you really want it ground rather than whole. But I tend to like also having the whole seeds in my various things. I like the way they look. I, I especially like in the cracker bread and the yeast breads. I really like the way they look in there. And um, I like having those little chewy pieces. And so that's just my personal preference. But yes, any of these you can grind up. I just recommend using a coffee grinder rather than using your grain mill because that's going to be a little harder to clean out than something like a coffee grinder. So for me, I soak the seeds. And this is an important step if you don't want to grind them. You still need to soak them. So for example, when I'm doing the cracker bread or I'm doing the yeast breads or anything like that and I'm going to be adding the seeds, I'm going to soak them in warm water first. And it's usually going to be whatever liquid, it doesn't have to necessarily be water, that I'm already going to be adding to that in the first place. Pancake batter is one of those things because it's, it's a batter, it's more runny. You can just add the seeds directly into the batter and then just let your batter sit for several minutes. I say up to 15 minutes to allow your seeds to soak. And that soaking process alone will break down that outer shell of your seeds 
so that they're going to be able, you'll be able to digest them easier and then get the benefits rather than just, especially with the flaxseed, than just having it go right through your system and not getting anything out of it. So soaking to me most of the time is going to be my preferred choice. Now um, with yogurt, again, that's something else, especially if you leave, instead of like straining off any way that may separate, just throw the seeds into the yogurt, mix it up and let it sit. Just like I said before, 10 to 15 minutes, it'll soak up that extra liquid and then that liquid will also soak the seeds so that makes them easier to digest. So anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. So make sure when you're using your seeds, you're either going to grind them or you're going to soak them to be able to get all the benefits of them. Now, another thing you can do if you're just wanting to take the seeds for, um, obviously if you're making a smoothie, you're usually blending everything in the blender anyway, and you can just throw the seeds right in there and not have to worry about soaking them. But um, if you're wanting to soak them and just drink them down for their benefits, you can just add them to juice, tea, or water, whatever your favorite beverage is, and let them sit just like before. And even if it's cold juice, if you leave it in there for at least 15 minutes, they will still soften up quite a bit. I like to do that with chia. Chia is one of the easiest ones when it comes to that. Uh, black seed is similar to the flax seed in the, in the harder outer shell. So these ones definitely need a good grinding or soaking. Whereas these one, these, the poppy seed and the chia seed uh, might not need it as much, but you're still going to reap better benefits by soaking if you do it that way. Now, I also wanted to say one of the reasons I initially started adding things like poppy seed was the first one was as I was reading about it. This was maybe as long as 20 years ago. And I realized how many minerals were in poppy seeds. We'll come to find out most of those same minerals like your magnesium, manganese, phosphorus, potassium, calcium can be found in almost all of your different seeds. And so just like I'm always saying, magnesium and calcium really need to be taken together. And what you'll find in nature is that Anything that's got magnesium in it has calcium in it and vice versa. And you'll also most likely find phosphorus, potassium, and manganese in there as well. And all of these different minerals work together and you're going to get far better benefits out of something like that rather than taking separate little uh, individual supplements in that. So finding ways to incorporate different foods such as seeds to get your minerals into your diet is going to be a lot better for you, a lot healthier for you than being dependent on supplements. Now I'm not anti-supplement, but I'm finding myself more and more, even since the, la the video I did a couple of years ago on uh, where I was researching some different companies, like, you know, what had the highest ratings on supplements. I'm becoming more and more suspicious of pretty much any supplement. Uh, a lot of times they might have good stuff in there, but there's a lot of bad stuff in there. You're going to have binders, even in a lot of your capsules, there's a lot of fillers and stuff added in there that's just wasted space and money and may not even be good for you. One thing that I did start doing for Patrick, especially just to kind of get him through some of this harder, more stressful stuff he's dealing with is um, I got him the multivitamin supplement that is carried by Azure Standard. It's called Azure Well. And I trust their products more than any other now, even more so than Now Foods, which was my long time running uh, favorite company for supplements. I would now switch completely to Azure Well. So if you're looking for a really good supplement because you feel like you need that extra, they are more expensive, but what I learned about the company and how they they uh, source things and the research they do on anything that they add to anything, I feel like I would trust them more than anything. So yes, I think there's times we can add vitamin and mineral supplements when we really need it, but I think we also need to find ways to get it through whole food sources and learn more about those and learn the best ways to incorporate them into our diet so we can get all these great vitamins and minerals in the way that we were intended. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and it just gave you some food for thought there and 
any thoughts, ideas you'd like to share, please put those in comments down below, especially if what are your favorite types of seeds to add to your different foods? How do you prefer to grind? Do you prefer to sow? What do you like to add them to? Share all that with us in comments down below. And thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.